Hello, second grade, and welcome back to chapter three of The Witches. I am so excited because in this chapter, we are gonna learn how to identify a witch, kind of like a, a scientific experiment. What are the traits and characteristics of witches? How do I spot them out in the community? These witches mean bad business. They've done terrible things to kids, and I think we need to know how to spot them so that we can avoid them, stay away. Maybe do a six foot rule, social distance ourselves from these witches. We've got to do it. Was that a question? Oh, d d don't worry, gloves, no big deal. Hair, this is my normal hair, hair I always have. Enjoy chapter three. Chapter three, how to recognize a witch. The next evening, after my grandmother had given me my bath, she took me once again into the living room for another story. Tonight, the old woman said, I am going to tell you how to recognize a witch when you see one. Can you always be sure? I asked. No, she said. You can't, and that's the trouble. But you can't make a pretty good guess. She was dropping cigar ash all over her lap, and I hoped she wasn't going to catch on fire before she told me how to recognize a witch. In the first place, she said, a real witch is certain always to be wearing gloves when you meet her. Surely not always, I said. What about in the summer when it's hot? Even in the summer, my grandmother said. She has to. Do you know? want to know why? Why? I said, because she doesn't have fingernails. Instead of fingernails, she has thin, curvy claws like a cat, and she wears the gloves to hide them. Mind you, lots of very respectable women wear gloves, especially in winter, so this doesn't help you very much. Mama used to wear gloves, I said. Not in my house, my grandmother said. Witches wear gloves even in the house. They only take them off when they go to bed. How do you know all this, Grandmama? Don't interrupt, she said. Just take it all in. The second thing to remember is that a real witch is always bald. Bald, I said. Bald as a boiled egg, my grandmother said. I was shocked. There was something indecent about a bald woman. Why are they bald, Grandmama? Don't ask me why, she snapped. But you can take it from me that not a single hair grows on a witch's head. How horrid. Disgusting, my grandmother said. If she's bald, she'll be easy to spot, I said. Not at all, my grandmother said. A real witch always wears a wig to hide her baldness. She wears a first-class wig, and it is almost impossible to tell a really first-class wig from ordinary hair unless you give it a pull to see if it comes off. And that's what I'll have to do, I said. Well, don't be foolish, my grandmother said. You can't go around pulling at the hair of every lady you meet, even if she is wearing gloves. Just you try it and see what happens. So that doesn't help much either, I said. None of these things is any good on its own, my grandmother said. It's only when you put them all together that they begin to make a little sense, mind you. My grandmother went on. These wigs do cause a rather serious problem for witches. What problem, Grandmama? They make the scalp itch most terribly, she said. You see, when an actress wears a wig, or if you or I were to wear a wig, we would be putting it on over our own hair. But a witch has to put it straight on her naked scalp. And the underneath of a wig is always very rough and scratchy. It sets up a frightful itch on the bald skin. It causes nasty sores on the head. Wig rash, the witches call it. And it doesn't half itch. What other things must I look for to recognize a witch, I asked. Look for the nose holes, my grandmother said. Witches have slightly larger nose holes than ordinary people. The rim of each nose hole is pink and curvy, like the rim of a certain kind of seashell. Why do they have such big nose holes, I asked. For smelling with, my grandmother said. A real witch has the most amazing powers to smell. She can actually smell out a child who is standing on the other side of the street in a pitch black night. She couldn't smell me, I said. I've just had a bath. Oh, 
yes, she could, my grandmother said. The cleaner you happen to be, the more smelly you are to a witch. Well, that can't be true, I said. An absolutely clean child gives off the most ghastly stench to a witch, my grandmother said. The dirtier you are, the less you smell. But that doesn't make sense, Grandmama. Oh, yes, it does, my grandmother said. It isn't the dirt that the witch is smelling. It is you. The smell that drives a witch mad actually comes right out of your own skin. It comes oozing out of your skin in waves, and these waves, stink waves, the witch call them, go floating through the air and hit the witch right smack in her nostrils. They send her reeling. Now wait a minute, Grandmama. Don't interrupt, she said. The point is this. When you haven't washed for a week and your skin is all covered over with dirt, then quite obviously the stink waves cannot come oozing out nearly so strong. I shall never have a bath again, I said. Just don't have one too often, my grandmother said. Once a month is quite enough for a sensible child. Wow, once a month. That seems like a, a, a low amount of baths. It was at moments like these that I loved my grandmother more than ever. Grandmama, I said, if it's a dark night, how can a witch smell the difference between a child and a grown-up? Well, because grown-ups don't give out stink waves, she said. Only children do that. But I don't really give out stink waves, do I? I said. I'm not giving them out at this very moment, am I? Well, not to me, you aren't, my grandmother said. To me, you are smelling like raspberries and cream, but to a witch you could be smelling absolutely disgusting. Well, what would I be smelling of, I asked. Dog's droppings my grandmother said. I reeled. I was stunned. Dog's droppings, I cried. I am not smelling of dog's droppings. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. What's more, my grandmother said, speaking with a touch of relish, to a witch, you would be smelling of fresh dog's droppings. That simply is not true, I cried. I know I am not smelling of dog's droppings, stale or fresh. There's no point in arguing about it, my grandmother said. It's a fact of life. I was outraged. I simply couldn't bring myself to believe what my grandmother was telling me. So if you see a woman holding her nose as she passes you on the street, she went on, that woman could easily be a witch. I decided to change the subject. Tell me what else to look for in a witch, I said. Well, the eyes, my grandmother said. Look carefully at the eyes, because the eyes of a real witch are different from yours and mine. Look in the middle of each eye, where there is normally a little black dot. If she is a witch, the black dot will keep changing color. And you will see fire, and you will see ice dancing right in the very center of the colored dot. It will send shivers running all over your skin. My grandmother leaned back in her chair and sucked away contentedly at her foul black cigar. I squatted on the floor, staring up at her, fascinated. She was not smiling. She looked deadly serious. Wow, that was informative. So what are some things we learned? Uh, number one, witches are gonna always wear gloves because of the fingernails. Uh, two, they wear some sort of a head covering. They've got wigs on because they have no hair. I can't believe people have to do that. I heard it's kind of itchy, I don't know. Um, we also know that kids smell disgusting. They smell like dog poo. Oh, huh. So the advisement is to take one bath a month. I don't like that idea. I feel like we probably need more than one bath a month, more than one bath a week. But again, we need to social distance ourselves from the witches. We need to stay way further than six feet away. See if we can do that. Um, we're going to finish the chapter tomorrow. Too big. So part two tomorrow, we're going to learn some more facts about how to identify those witches out in the wild. Stay away. We've got to figure out who you are. We've got to stay away. Whew, bad things are happening when these witches are around. See you tomorrow, second grade.